How often should you inject testosterone? Once a week, twice a week, every day? Here's the truth. There is no one size fits all answer. And if you're just doing what your buddy at the gym said or what your old school primary care told you, you're probably doing it wrong. Convenience plays a role, but the goal is to balance that convenience with consistent symptom control, stable hormone levels, and long-term health. And in this video, I'm gonna break down exactly how you do that. That means fingerprint medicine. There is no one size fit all protocols. Every patient responds differently. So my job is to help find the method and frequency that actually works for your body, not just copy and pasting something from a textbook. In my practice, I have patients injecting once a week, twice a week, every four days, every three days, or even doing daily microdoses, and even some that enjoy using creams or the oral TRT like Kaisertrax. Others combine low dose injections with morning oral doses for a steady state balance. And I can't stress this enough. This isn't about chasing lab numbers. The goal is to create a plan that actually makes you feel better day to day and holds up in real life. In this video, we're going to cover the five burning questions most men ask about in terms of injection frequency. With the first being, why does frequency matter more than most people think? So let me break this down in a way that makes sense. Testosterone isn't like a daily vitamin that you take and forget. It's more like keeping a bucket filled that has a small hole at the bottom. Your body naturally metabolizes testosterone throughout the day, like water slowly leaking out of the bucket. If you inject a huge dose all at once, say once a week or every two weeks, which is absolutely terrible to do, it's like pouring a giant pitcher of water into the bucket. For the first few days, it might overflow. You might feel great, high energy, libido's up, maybe even a little too wired. But because of the hole at the bottom, your testosterone drains out fast. By day five or six, the bucket is getting close to empty again. That's when the energy crashes, mood swings, or libido problems start to kick in. That is not optimization. That's reaction management. When we do smaller, more frequent injections, it's like topping off the bucket regularly. We're slowly adding just enough water to stay right below the overflow line. You're not flooding the system and you're not letting it run dry. You're maintaining the sweet spot, that patient-specific threshold where testosterone levels are steady, symptoms are stable, and your body can function consistently without the chaos of highs and lows. Let's talk about what actually happens when you take a big dose of testosterone once a week or worse every two weeks. The idea behind this old school method was simplicity. Fewer injections sounded easier and more convenient, but the problem is your body doesn't work that way. Testosterone has a half-life, which means the body naturally breaks it down over time. And depending on the ester you're using, like cypionate, enanthate, or propionate, that half-life can change. Some esters break down faster, some slower, like undecanate. But in all cases, your body starts metabolizing it as soon as it's injected. That means once it's injected, your body starts breaking it down immediately. When you take a large dose all at once, you create an unnatural spike. For the first few days, testosterone levels are sky high. This can lead to anxiety, irritability, and fluid retention. Now, most people assume fluid retention is all about estrogen, but that's not entirely true. Yes, rapid aromatization into estrogen can play a role, especially in men who are sensitive to those shifts. But in many cases, fluid retention actually comes from the sharp fluctuations in testosterone levels themselves. When your testosterone spikes, then crashes, it throws off multiple hormonal pathways, including how your body holds onto water. That leads to puffiness, bloating, and then the uncomfortable off or down feeling. But I digress. Back to what I was saying. Once those levels crash, you don't just lose the extra water weight. You lose energy, libido, and some cases you might experience erectile dysfunction before your next injection is due. That hormonal roller coaster disrupts everything from mood to sleep to focus and overall quality of life. Then there's the mechanical issue. Large injections mean larger fluid volumes, which increases discomfort and the chances of developing scar tissue over time. Bigger doses can also drive up hematocrit, which is the thickening of your blood and increasing your cardiovascular risk if it's not managed properly. So let me give you some real-world examples. I had a patient who came to me after being on 0.5 ml injections once a week, or 100 milligram weekly. 
He felt great for the first two days, but right around day five, his libido was gone, mood tanked, and erections were not as strong. So we switched him. We split up the dose, twice weekly subcutaneous, and everything started to level out for him. Another patient was given 200 milligram every two weeks by his provider. That protocol wrecked his system. After switching to low dose twice a week injection, he told me, doc, my life did a 180. I finally feel normal again. However, convenience absolutely matters, but dumping in too much at once just creates chaos for your system. The better path is finding the rhythm that fits your life while keeping your body stable and health protected. The better path is about finding the balance between convenience, consistency, sustainability, and long-term health. Now, how can you dial in TRT so you get the benefits without the side effects? In my experience, twice weekly low-dose low subcutaneous injections work great for most men who want stable optimized levels without going super physiologic. Disclaimer, we're not trying to make bodybuilders here. We're trying to help men feel and function better without adding risk. More frequent dosing avoids the hormone roller coaster. It keeps testosterone in a tighter range, say 700 to 1000, instead of swinging from 300 to 1700. Estrogen stays more stable because you're not flooding the system all at once. Hematocrit is easier to manage, and mood and sleep tend to improve because hormones aren't swinging wildly. So should you inject sub-Q or IM, and what's the difference? Personally, I prefer subcutaneous injections and what I call superficial intramuscular over traditional deep intramuscular injections for most of my patients. Subcutaneous and shallow IM are less traumatic to the tissue, have lower chances of scar buildup, and make the process easier to stick with because they're more comfortable. You don't need to jab a long harpoon into your muscles to get good results. And frankly, doing so can make the process more intimidating and less sustainable for the long term. Ditch the 23 gauge. You don't need to jab a long harpoon into your muscle to get good results. And frankly, doing so can make the process more intimidating and less sustainable for the long term. For a once weekly injections, I use a 27 to 29 gauge half inch needle. For smaller, more frequent doses, I will use a 30 gauge half inch or even a 5 16th of an inch. It's like barely a pinch. Those make it the process much easier, safer, and something my patients are more likely to stick with. Now to bring it all together, how do you make TRT sustainable for the long haul? Testosterone optimization therapy is not about chasing higher lab results or stacking numbers on a chart. It's about protecting your long-term health, managing the risks of cardiovascular strain and hematocrit elevation, and keeping your hormones in a balance. So you actually feel better, not just look better on paper. We need to manage hematocrit carefully because an elevated red blood cell count can increase cardiovascular risk, especially in guys who don't hydrate, don't get regular sleep, or have sleep apnea, or even metabolic dysfunctions. So back to the question, how often should you inject? The answer, it depends on you. For most men, smaller, more frequent sub-Q dosing tends to be the sweet spot. It keeps testosterone levels stable, reduces risks, and avoids the emotional and physical roller coasters of your peaks and valleys. Now, here's something important to understand. No matter what frequency you choose, the quality of the medication matters just as much as the dose. Testosterone therapy should always come from a legitimate licensed source, either a traditional FDA-approved pharmacy or a reputable compounding pharmacy that meets strict quality control standards. This ensures the medication is sterile, properly dosed, and safe for long-term use. Do not use underground sources, black market vials, or something from a guy at the gym, or your trainer's garage. And yes, I've actually had those conversations with patients. Cutting corners with hormone therapy puts you at risk for infection, contamination, or getting a product that isn't what it claims to be. This is why working with a licensed provider is a non-negotiable. You need medication that's prescribed for you, manufactured with proper oversight and monitored for safety over time. If you found this helpful, check out the other videos in the series where we talk about testosterone, gut health, and how lifestyle impacts hormones. And if you're looking for a doctor who treats the whole system, not just the symptom, stick around. This is about longevity, performance, and health, not just numbers. See you on the next one.